Hello everybody and welcome back to The Sofa. Y'all, today we are going to be talking about a story that is bone chilling, that is tragic, that is sad, it is awful. So before we even get going, let that be your little trigger warning for like the rest of the video, okay? So today we're going to be talking about a man who was a surf instructor. His business was named Love Water Surf Company. It was located in Santa Barbara. Now on the website, it describes this guy as like a champion surfer, a youth mentor. He enjoys spear fishing, which sadly that will become prevalent here shortly. Uh, he also enjoys sailing. And the website also, it, you know, shows pictures of his family, his children, the whole nine yards. What's also interesting is he has an extensive education and background as well. He has a BA from Point Loma University, a master's from UCSB, uh, four years teaching high school, 10 years directing youth-based nonprofit, 25 plus years of surfing experience, 15 years surf coaching experience, competed at the collegiate level, and he's also a CPR certified lifeguard. But here's the thing, like on that surface level, at least to me, it was like, okay, this guy has an education. He is like the surfer dude, you know, that whole kind of vibe. But obviously beneath all that, something was festering. And when that something that was festering, like came to a head and just boiled over recently, it left his two children who were very young, stolen from this earth in a horrifying manner and his excuse for it is shocking so the monster that we're talking about his name is matthew coleman now his children were only two years old and 10 months old i mean these were babies for god's sakes so last Saturday, he took his children out with him. Now he didn't really tell his wife where he was taking them. And after a while she was like, okay, you know, texting him, trying to get up with him, whatever. And he wasn't responding, nothing. And so she started getting really worried because she was like, he doesn't have the car seats with him. Y you know, what's up? And so eventually when he never responded, she contacted the authorities and she's like, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. Now the authorities would ask her, hey, take your iPhone, it has that find me feature, whatever, see if you can track him down. And so they did this and it comes up that he was like last at a place called Rosarito, Mexico. Now, obviously this is not a good look and this starts looking like a parental kidnapping kind of a situation here. Obviously, you know, this is out of the country. I mean, these places are close, obviously, whatever, but nonetheless, this sends up, you know, flags to the FBI. They get involved the whole nine yards. I mean, this is not good, but sadly, it gets worse. So Matthew would be detained by some Border Patrol agents. And when that took place, they were like searching his van. They already, you know, like had obviously like, you know, a, a heads up about this guy. So they search his van and the children are absent and they also find blood in the van. So clearly this is not good. He's detained, thank goodness. Now, when Matthew was being interviewed, he would admit to doing this to his children and taking their lives. He would tell the authorities, where their discarded clothing was, where the weapon that he used was, and that is alleged to be a spear gun. Remember we talked about he was in a spear fishing, all that kind of stuff earlier, and I just, I can't get that out of my head. Now, even worse is a farm worker found the two children. Can you imagine stumbling upon that carnage? Because this wasn't like a clean situation. He used the spear gun multiple times on these babies. So it, it was vicious and it was horrendous. And I have no idea how someone that would even think to call himself a person, number one, number two, a father, could ever do such a thing. Now, obviously, and thank God, Matthew is being held on no bond. That's a, a no-brainer. But then the next question is, why would somebody do this? I mean, why would they do it? And y'all, the reasoning, I was like, what? Okay, so during those interviews with the FBI and whatnot, Matthew admitted, he was like, you know what? I'm into a couple of very big conspiracy theories. I don't want to say them here. You can guess they've been very popular in the last few years uh, and because I'm sure it would probably do something to the video maybe. But he was very involved in that, very down that rabbit hole. And he said that he believed that his wife had serpent DNA 
and that it had been passed to his children and that they would turn into monsters and so he had to take them out like that was the only choice and he said you know what i know what i did was wrong but that's like the only thing that i could do to save the world and i'm just like oh my god there's so much to unpack there, and I was like, well, if that was gonna be the case, why didn't you take your own life? You know, <laughs> like, why? You know, I want to know what was going on in his world, what was going on in, like, his household leading up to this, like, in the months, years, whatever, how long had he gone down this rabbit hole of this and to arrive at that, because that whole thing that he's talking about, the whole serpent thing, all that, that dates way back. That's like before this most recent stuff going on. That's from a hot minute ago. I can remember that from like years ago. So it's interesting that he kind of went down that rabbit hole with that specific train of thought and arrived at, it was his wife that had the serpent DNA. Because on that same note, I'm just like, okay, at the same time, I'm like, but yet you're the one who's going to do something as vicious and horrifying as doing that to your children. It's like he's the real monster, but projecting that onto his wife. It's just the mental gymnastics just shock me. Again, this is a fresh case. This literally just happened. My heart goes out to his wife, to any surviving family members. My heart also goes out to the poor little children. I hope they are resting in peace. I'll be very curious to follow this case because if this is what he's coming out with right away, I want to see what his story is in like six months. Now, last I checked, he does have an August 31st, like that's gonna be his first appearance or whatever. So I'll be curious to see if, you know, where he's at with that. So that said, this is, I know a little bit of a different tone here, but I read this and I was like, oh my God, I, I just can't with this stuff. With these crazy stories that are coming out and these poor children that just keep losing their lives to these crazy parents and caregivers. So anyways, I hope everybody out there is doing well. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. And until next time, I'll see you then.